Welcome back to another exciting edition of Certified Arborist Exam Prep. Today we're going to talk Chapter 2, Tree Identification. So why is tree identification important? Well, it's the essential first step in diagnosing tree health. Pest and disease vary between species. And that's why taxonomy, the science of identifying and naming plants, is so crucial. Knowing the tree that you're dealing with is the first step in proper tree care. Alright, so how exactly do we divide plants in this hierarchy? Well, let's break it down step by step. So first we have kingdom, and this is the broadest category. All plants fall under the plant, plantae kingdom. It includes everything from mosses to giant sequoias. Phylum. Here we have uh, more division based on major characteristics. The two major plant phyla we deal with are angiosperms, flowering plants with seeds enclosed in their fruits, and then we have gymnosperms, which are cone-bearing plants with seeds with coat, uh, exposed seeds. So that's phylum. Class. Within each phylum, plants are grouped based on more detailed traits. For example, in angiosperms, we even split it down into monocotyledons, which is palms and grasses. These are plants with one seed leaf. And then we have eudicotyledons, plants with two seed leaves, like oaks and maples. And then we go even farther, we have order. This narrows it down even more by grouping plants that share certain structural features. For example, in eudicots, you have the order of rosales for roses and their relatives. Families are groups of plants that are even more closely related. Plants in the same family usually have similar flowers, fruit types, and other physical traits. When we go to genus, this is where things start to get way more specific. A genus groups plants that are closely related and similar in appearance. For example, Acer is the genus for maples, and all maples share certain traits like similar leaf shapes and sap producing capabilities. And lastly, we have species. Finally, species are individual types of plants that are so closely related that they can reproduce and produce viable offspring. For example, Acer saccharum is sugar maple, a specific species of Acer genus. So basically, they can breed among each other, the same species. And then, uh, so remember, the key to understanding taxonomy is that we move down this hierarchy. Plants get more and more closely related. So two plants in the same family are less alike than two plants in the same genus. And if two plants are the same species, they're almost identical. And a good way to remember this is the phrase, kings play chess on fat, gray stumps. So as we discussed, the two big uh, plant groups are going to be your angiosperms and your gymnosperms. Angiosperms have seed covered by an ovary, which is usually a fruit, and gymnosperms are a little different. They're like naked seed plants, like pines or firs, and they have their seeds in cones instead of fruits. Plants in the same family or genus often share similar problems. This makes sense because they're closely related. If you know a tree's family, you've already got a head start on knowing what pest or disease might affect it. Alright, so we talked about taxonomy and classification. Let's get into plant nomenclature, which is the naming of the plants. Sometimes common names can be confusing. So like a Douglas fir is not actually a fir. A bald cypress, not actually a cypress. Sru pine, definitely not a pine. Uh, that's why we rely it. That's why we rely on botanical names, which are made up of the genus and species. So here's some of the rules: genus is always capitalized, species is lowercase. Both are italicized or underlined. And here's an example: Acer saccharum, which is sugar maple. Hybrids are crossbreeding results written with X between genus and species. So you're gonna write like Quercus X. And then you're going to write the species for a hybrid uh, subspecies, distinct groups within species, and that's abbreviated SSP. Varieties and cultivars, so a variety naturally breeding to a distinct trait, and it's italicized but not capitalized. A cultivar is cultivated variety, it has uniform genetics written in single quotations or with CV. So you got naturally 
and then you have cultivated. So we created that. And when it comes to identifying trees, we rely on morphology. We talked about that in chapter one, and that's the shape and appearance of a plant's parts. You can often ID a tree just by its overall shape from a distance. We talked about that too with X current and D current trees. So we'll just get into the, the leaves. We got simple leaves and uh, they're single with no leaflets. Compound leaves have multiple leaflets, but only one bud at the base. So if you look at the picture, there's only one bud and then there's a leaf coming up with leaflets. Pinnately compound leaves attach along the central vein like feathers. Bipinnately compound leaves have a second order with even smaller leaflets attached. And palmately compound leaves all meet at one point like fingers on a hand, to so like the palm of your hand. We also use leaf margins, bases, and apexes to help ID leaves. Is the margin smooth or serrated? How does the leaf base attach to the stem? Does the leaf tip come to a point or stay rounded? These are all clues to narrowing down the tree species. Here are a few examples of leaf margin. So this is the outside edge of the leaf and how it's shaped. So you have the entire, which is a smooth leaf and then serrate. And they're not uh, variations of serrated. Serrate's like a knife, right? Serrated knife. And then at the bottom you have unulate and you have lobed and that's like white oak. Um, so just learn those. There's a way more to it, but that's all they have in the study guide. And leaf bases are the bases of the leaf where they attach to the stem. So it's kind of the angle. Are they acute? Do they come to a point? Are they rounded? Chordate, kind of rounded on both sides, oblique and auriculate. And the leaf apex, that's the tip of the leaf and the angle of it as well. Obtuse, acute, round. Pretty much just have to memorize them. All right, so let's talk about how the leaf is arranged on the stem. This is also an identification cue. So this one is alternate. So you have your buds staggered along the stem. This is opposite. So you have two leaves coming off of one bud. You see in there coming off of opposite sides of each other. And then you have world, which is three. What is mad horse? So trees that have opposite arrangement, like we just talked about. So you have two leaves coming off the bud oppositely. Uh, they all fall in the category mad horse. So you have maple, ash, dogwood. And the horse chestnut, they all have opposite arrangements. So this really narrows it down. You're in the woods, you look up, you see a tree that has opposite arrangement. And it's going to be one of these trees. And here's a few tips for identifying conifers, gymnosperms. Yeah, pines have needles and clusters of two, three, or five. So if it has those amount of needles in its cluster, you pull out the needles and it comes out in bundles of two, three, or five. You know, you have a pine that narrows it down pretty, pretty far. Uh, spruce and fir needles, uh, they produce single needles. So you just pull out one. You don't pull out a cluster. So then you have a spruce or a fir and you don't have a pine. Spruce, a good way to remember that is the needles are short, sharp, single, and square. So in the winter, leaves aren't going to be much help, but don't worry. You can identify trees in other ways, bark, twigs. Uh, like on the twigs, you're going to look for alternate, opposite, simple, or compound. We just went through all that. So now you'll be able to do that. You can look for the fruit and even the pits of the twigs. Now the arborist exam is not going to go much further in depth, depth on tree ID. So just don't worry too much about that. You're not going to have to learn all the scientific names of every tree or anything like that. So, but as an arborist, it will help you tremendous, tremendously in your career to learn your local trees and all their common stressors. So to wrap it up, we covered the importance of understanding plant taxonomy and morphology for accurate tree identification and care. By knowing how plants are classified from the broad divisions of angiosperms and gym gymnosperms down to specific species, we can better predict their potential pests and diseases. So please hit the like, 
button, subscribe to my channel, and get ready for the next thrilling video on soil science.